You are listening to Mindset Metabolism Mastery, Episode 8. If you have ever caught yourself saying, I know what I need to do, I just need to do it. This episode is for you. Welcome to Mindset and Metabolism Mastery, a show for women who are tired of feeling hopeless, defeated, and frustrated with their bodies and want to have more energy to show up every day as the best version of themselves. I'm holistic nutrition consultant, Shannon Hagel, and I can help you reprogram your brain to create bulletproof consistency with ease and address your personal hormonal imbalances that are leading to weight gain. Life can feel a whole lot better with a body you love, delicious food, and a little wine. And I'm here to help you get there. Ready to lose weight and feel amazing in your body? Let's dive in. Welcome, friends. How often have you said to yourself, I know what I need to do. I just need to do it. I just need to get started. I just need to follow through. I just need to get motivated. I just need to do it. So this begs the question, if you know what you need to do, then why aren't you doing it? And that's the question that we're going to answer today. Why aren't you doing the things you know you need to do to get to your goal, to lose the weight for good, to feel amazing in your body, to be eating healthy food, to have all day energy? Why are you sitting there not doing the things that you know you need to do? And we're going to discover how to actually start flipping that script and making it happen. You know, there's this belief that knowledge is the thing you need in order to get to your goal. So we research and research and Google and take courses and we read books. And while I do believe you definitely do need to learn what your body needs in order to function optimally, especially after the age of 40, when things become so much more complex. In order to support your body in a way where you have all day energy, where you're able to lose the extra weight, where you're able to balance and support your hormones, your thyroid function. But a lot of you tell me that you already know what those things are. You just need to do it, right? You already know that you should be eating more vegetables. If I was putting my solely nutritionist hat on today, I would tell you, you know, eating five to 10 servings of vegetables a day is the ballpark that you should be in. So you know you should eat more vegetables. You already know that you should be eating less sugar, right? There's no nutritional value in sugar, in processed sugars. We know that it doesn't serve us. We know that it causes more cravings. And we know that it makes us feel like shit and adds on the extra pounds. We know we should be eating less sugar. And yet, we're just not doing it. Right? You know that you should be moving your body more throughout the day or not overeating every night. You have the knowledge of what you should be doing, and yet you're still not doing it. You're still stuck because knowledge alone does not create results. If knowledge alone created results, none of us would be stuck. We would all be experts in everything. We would be masters of all of the crafts. We would have all read four-hour work week and be working max four hours a week every week. I don't know about you, but my work week consists much more than four hours. We would have read 12 months to a million dollars, and we would all be millionaires by now. You would have read five love languages and have the perfect, most loving, fulfilling relationship. You would have read The Secret and be manifesting everything in your life that you could ever possibly dream of. You would have listened to this podcast, past episodes, and be applying all of the knowledge you've learned from all past seven episodes and already gotten results. But results come from taking action, from implementing the knowledge, not from learning and absorbing the knowledge. Not only that, results come from taking action consistently, time and time again. Knowledge alone does not create results. So why are you sitting there with all of this knowledge of how to get out of your current pain and not implementing that knowledge? Is it lack of desire? Maybe you just don't want it enough. Maybe if you wanted it just a little bit more, you would actually be motivated to start to put that knowledge into action. I call bullshit on that because I know from the conversations I've had with so many of you that you want it. You want it so bad. You want 
to be in a body that you feel good in. You want to have a relationship with food where you're not obsessing about the things you can't eat all day long or when you're going to be able to get that next sugar or caffeine hit. You want to live in a body where you feel energetic, where you have vitality, where you have no worries about how your health is going to be affected down the road. I know that you want these things and I know that you want it bad enough. But wanting and desire also do not create results. I am definitely guilty of this in my own life. For instance, this podcast, I sat around not making this podcast for about a year and a half after I decided that I was going to do it. The desire was there. I saw how much value I could give in this podcast. I knew that I would enjoy making it. There was lots of desire. And I'd spent tons of time researching, building up my knowledge of how to actually make it happen. And yet, it took me a year and a half to actually put that knowledge and that desire into movement. This used to show up in my life in terms of the nutrition piece as well. When my kids were little, my kids are now seven and 10 years old. But when they were little and not sleeping through the night, and I was exhausted at the end of the day, dinner would often show up as a piece of toast with some peanut butter and a glass of red wine. I was already a nutritionist at this point. I knew better. I knew that my body needed more than that, that it didn't need this big carbohydrate and alcohol kick right before bed, that that would not help me sleep fully and restfully. And sleep and energy were the things I felt like I was lacking the most in my life at the time. It was the thing I desired most in my life at the time. And yet, I was eating the toast with peanut butter and red wine for dinner. I had all the knowledge and desire, and I was not putting it into practice. I knew that it was not supportive of my weight loss goals, of my energy, of my health. So if you have the knowledge and you have the desire, why are you not doing the things? The answer to that doesn't lie in increasing your desire, wanting it more. It doesn't lie in doing just a little bit more research. Maybe if I just learn a little bit more, I'll find the key. The answer is not outside of you. It is in you. It is in your brain. So first, you need to figure out what are the things that you're doing instead of the things that you know you should be doing to get to your goal. So maybe if your goal is to lose weight or to have more energy, to incorporate more healthy ways of eating in your life, maybe you know you need to stop nighttime snacking. Maybe you know you need to stop eating lots of high sugary or high carbohydrate foods or high processed foods that are going to take you farther away from your goal. Maybe you know the things that you should be doing is instead eating healthy vegetables, protein, healthy fats, and having periods in your day where you're not eating, where you're not over-consuming. The thing you're doing instead is the nighttime snacking, right? Eating the bowl of popcorn, breaking out the chips, eating the baked goods, having the sugary drinks or the alcohol in the evening when you feel depleted and tired and exhausted. So discovering what you're doing instead of the thing you know you should be doing is really important to identify. And then I want you to ask yourself, why am I doing this? Now, this is going to be something that I want you to take actual action on today, right? A lot of you who are stuck in this are going to want to just absorb the information from this podcast and hope that the information that you receive will automatically make these changes for you, right? That's exactly this cycle. This is the self-sabotage that we're talking about. So what I need you to do is to not listen, but to do. I want you to identify right now what are the things that you are doing instead of the things you know you need to be doing to get to your goal. If you have a pen and paper handy, I want you to write it down. And then I want you to ask yourself, why am I doing this? I don't know is not an acceptable answer. <laughs> Take a stab at it. Come up with possibilities if you don't know the exact answer. Possibilities are a good place to start. You know, I have worked with chiropractors and nurses and doctors and respiratory therapists and psychologists all through my Thrive Formula program. They have the knowledge. They understand deeply the human body or the human brain, and yet they are also not taking action on that knowledge. So I don't want you to shame yourself or judge the fact that you're not putting that knowledge into action. 
know that that is a normal human trait. So instead of judging it, let's just explore it so that we can actually change it. So start to look at why you're doing the things that are not working towards your goals. I often find that the more knowledgeable someone is, the more stuck they become. They become so reliant on information outside of their brains to find the answers. There's this lack of trust in yourself, in your own brain. But I promise you, the answers are already within you. So don't allow yourself to say, I don't know. Come up with three possibilities of why you're not doing the things or why you're doing the things that are not moving you towards your goal. So for myself, for instance, with the example of this podcast, why didn't I start my podcast a year and a half ago when I first decided that this was a desire and I gathered the knowledge? What was I doing instead? I was filling my time with tons of busy work. I was finding other projects to work on to fill that time. I was not delegating certain tasks in my business that I didn't need to be doing so that my time was consumed where I didn't have the space to create the podcast. Those were the things that I was doing instead. So why was I doing those things? Well, if I think about possibilities, why would I possibly do that? Why would I possibly do things that took me away from my goal? Maybe there was some fear about putting out this podcast and it not really resonating with anyone. There was definitely fear about my ability to be consistent with it. And I'd say there was probably some self-doubt. Like, who am I to be putting myself out there? And honestly, it felt much more comfortable to stay in my safe little bubble. Putting out this information, putting out this show to people also opens me up to criticism, (laughs) which I've already received. (laughs) And so wanting to avoid the discomfort of someone not liking what I was putting out, not appreciating or being critical of all this effort that I put in. And if I think about the toast and peanut butter with red wine for dinner, why was I eating that instead of a healthy, balanced meal? If I think back to that time, I could pinpoint a belief that came up for me time and time again at that time in my life after dealing with cranky toddlers and all the chaos involved in that, balancing work in between. At that time in my life, I had this belief that I deserved it. I deserve the wine. I deserve to be able to relax. I deserve to not have to put any more effort in. All of these are very legitimate reasons. There's nothing wrong with these reasons. Being aware of why we're doing the things that take us away from our goals rather than towards our goals and understanding that, becoming aware of that is essential for changing it. Being aware that I had this thought, I deserve it was necessary for me to come to terms with in order to be able to put into practice the things I know were actually going to help me. Rather than saying over and over to myself, I know I should eat a balanced dinner, eat more vegetables, and not have wine. Or rather than me trying harder or waiting for motivation to strike, when I stepped back and looked at why it was happening, then I could start to explore other possibilities. Is it true that I deserved to not have to put any more effort in and to just relax. Absolutely. But I also deserved to have a good night's sleep and to have more energy and to feel healthier in my body. I also deserved those things. If I didn't identify what was behind the reason I wasn't putting into practice the knowledge I already had, I would have stayed in that cycle of building up my knowledge and not putting it into practice, or telling myself I just needed to want it more, and guilting and shaming myself into trying to make it happen. So some reasons why you might not be doing the things that you know you should be doing to get you to your goal might be something like you eat when you're stressed. And so if you don't eat when you're feeling stress, then all you're left with is the stress. You don't want to feel stressed out anymore. You want that reprieve. Maybe one of the reasons why you don't move your body more is because it sounds like a lot of effort and you doubt that you're actually going to be able to see a payoff for the amount of effort that you want to put in. Maybe one of the reasons why you don't say no to the dessert or the alcohol at a social gathering is because you love feeling that connection with people and feeling like you're a part of the group. You think that it makes that experience more pleasurable. So think about some of the reasons why 
you might be avoiding doing the things that you know you should do or doing the things that don't support your body instead. I want you to grab a piece of paper and do this right now, right? If you are listening to this and not coming up with the answers right now, it is likely that this is what you are doing with everything in your life, expecting the learning and research to give you results all on its own. What are the things you know you should be doing? What are you doing instead? Why are you not doing the things you know you should be doing? Awareness is the most important step because you can't change what you don't know. Once you find out why you're doing what you're doing or avoiding doing the things you want to be doing, you can start to create different beliefs. You can start asking yourself, is the reason why you're avoiding the thing even true? Like, is it true that it takes too much effort to make a healthy dinner? This is one that I see often. Oh, that's going to take so much time and energy. My schedule's so busy. I have to have the kids off to soccer or to dance class. I work long hours. It's the last thing I want to do when I come home. This belief that making a healthy dinner has to take more effort than making an unhealthy dinner. And so just asking yourself, is that even true? And I can tell you right now (laughs) that it's not. This is something that we troubleshoot for often with our clients. Right? We think that going through the drive through is going to save us so much more time, but it takes just the same amount of time to run into the grocery store and get up pre-chopped veggies and a rotisserie chicken. So look at those reasons why you're avoiding and ask yourself, is this even true? What else is possible? The other thing I want you to look at is, are you willing to feel discomfort in order to get to your goal? Because in order to create a different result than you have, you have to take different action than you're currently taking right now. We have to make change. And if we know anything about the human brain is that it hates change because it takes more effort for our brain to think through the actions and implement them. Our brain wants to use the least amount of effort possible, always. So there's always going to be discomfort when we're working towards a goal that we have yet to achieve. So knowing Are you actually even willing to feel that discomfort to get to your goal? Are you willing to sit with the discomfort of stress without buffering that feeling with nighttime snacking? Are you willing to feel the discomfort of putting the extra effort in to move your body rather than sitting on the couch? Are you willing to feel the discomfort of an urge or craving and leaving it unanswered? Learning how to experience the discomfort without making that a problem, without making it an emergency, is going to be a really important piece to you staying on track long term. So while you certainly need knowledge of what your body needs in order to get to your goal of losing weight or feeling good in your skinny jeans or having all day energy or ending your hot flashes or increasing your muscle mass or eliminating bloat, And you definitely need desire to achieve your goal, willingness to feel discomfort, to have to want it enough, to value it enough to be willing to get out of your comfort zone and do what is not automatic. While you do need both of those things, the third and often missing element that is the thing that is keeping you from doing the things you already know is awareness and understanding of why you would have the power to get out of your pain and instead choose to stay in pain instead. The why is the key to understanding the beliefs that are keeping you from taking action. When you start to create awareness and start to dismantle these beliefs, then you will be able to start putting your knowledge and desire into actionable steps that will have you creating amazing results. So I want you guys to fill out those questions, write it down on paper. If you do not put it on paper, just know that this is an area where you are staying stuck in. And until you address it, you will continue to not put into practice what you already know. I'm here to support you with that. If you need that extra support, always reach out. I will see you in next week's episode where I will tell you exactly what you need in order to end the cycle of failure and ensure your weight loss success in 2024. Have a very happy holiday and a beautiful rest of your day. If you enjoyed today's show and don't want to worry about missing an episode, you can follow the show wherever you listen to your podcasts. And if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you could share the podcast with others who you think might benefit from it. 
and leave a rating and review to let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be a five-star rating, although I sure hope that you love the show. I want your honest feedback so I can create an awesome podcast that provides tons of value. Visit www.thrivefromtheinside.com forward slash podcast launch for step-by-step instructions on how to Thank follow, you for listening to today's episode review. of Mindset and Metabolism Mastery. If you want to learn more about balancing your hormones, repairing your metabolism, and losing weight with empowerment and ease, visit www.thrivefromtheinside.com. I'll see you next time.